Hi, Kanzi. Can we talk to you, Kanzi? Because I'm a stranger to Kanzi, I had to speak to him and Dr. Sue Savage Rumba through plexiglass for my safety. Dr. Sue's been studying bonobos, a member of the ape family, for nearly 40 years. She's holding Kanzi's three month old son, Tico. She's taught the bonobos to communicate with symbols called lexigrams. So, how does this lexigram thing work? We talk to Kanzi with this. Kanzi, come here. Come here. Can you say Matata? Matata. Matata. Matata is Kanzi's mother. All I have to say is the word, and Kanzi can find it. Can you show me Bob? Bob. Oh, that's right. Show me egg. 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 That's right. Show me chow. 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 That's right. Dr. Sue, how many words does Kanzi know? We just guess he knows several thousand. On his keyboard, there are about 450 that, that he can understand. The number that he uses on a daily basis is maybe 30 or 40. How did you teach Kanzi these words? The same way that I did with my son. I just talked to Kanzi like you see me talking now. He just was around me and learned it like a child. So I can say to him, Kanzi, would you sit up? Please sit up. OK. Dr. Sue says Kanzi and the other bonobos in her care are the only animals in the world who can do this. Go show her what you can do with a balloon. The important thing is that humans are said to be the only species that has control of their own breath. But Kanzi obviously has control of his breath. Communicating with Kanzi was kind of like talking to a toddler. We're going to listen to Lisa. Can we build some blocks? Kanzi, can you build blocks like this? Look, one, two, three. So that's what she did. Good job, Kanzi. Dr. Sue allows me to get up close to baby Tico, but I have to wear a mask so I don't pass any germs. This is Tico. He's looking at his lexigrams right now. Dr. Sue says when Tico was born, his mother passed him off to another bonobo and then to her. So Dr. Sue, uh, uh, for all practical purposes, are you Tico's mother? Yes, for all practical purposes, I'm Tico's mother. Does Tico sleep with you? Tico sleeps right with me. Sleep in that little room where we watch TV. We each have a futon. Because Tico is being raised by both humans and apes, the hope is he'll develop even more sophisticated language skills than his father, Kanzi. Do you think that Tico will actually be able to talk one day? We don't know. He might. This is a real honest attempt to cross the boundary and understand the species differences and the role of language in the development of rational thought. And so were you surprised by what you saw? I was surprised. It was really fascinating to watch Dr. Sue communicate with Kanzi. I mean, it was very apparent that Kanzi was understanding what, what she said. And uh, you saw this lexigram that I wanted to pull up. Um, it's a series of symbols and words. There are about 400 on this, uh, this board. And Kanzi carries this around with him. And this is how he communicates. And it's, it's really, uh, for example, there's, there's Perrier on here, there's arm, blue, try. And he can actually put together like two word sentences and multiple words. Like there are some symbols that aren't, aren't on here for flood, for example. So when Iowa was hit by the storm and was flooding, he would point out big water. Wow. And kale, yes, for example. I read, I, I read the, yeah, in the Time Magazine article, it said kale, when he was given kale to eat. He and it, and it. he had a hard time chewing the kale, so he pointed at slow lettuce. And, and pizza, pizza, he pointed at cheese, tomato, bread, because pizza, for some weird reason, is not on this, on this board. <laughs> but it, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And there's, there's this ongoing debate about the humane treatment of animals, as we all know. And there are a lot of people who don't believe that animals have feelings or emotions or can really comprehend. And Dr. Sue obviously feels otherwise. Mm -hmm. So what about the baby? Does she think that at some point the baby will be able to actually speak? She does. And the baby's really interesting because he's a fourth generation bonobo growing up around humans. And when they got uh, Kanzi, Kanzi was already six months old and they didn't start working with him until he was a couple of years old. So Tico is being cared for by this human who sleeps at the facility 95% of the time. 
And she believes that he will actually talk one day. Already, he's doing things that no bonobo has ever done. Like he sucks his thumb, which is wow. pretty unprecedented. Wow. Is it true that Kanzi made a pass at you? <laughs> Kanzi was, um, Kanzi did make a pass at me. And Dr. Sue is really funny. She said, the reason why you don't see more bonobos in zoos is because sexually they act out like humans do and they express themselves. But in full disclosure, he, he got very excited in front of the male cameraman as well, <laughs> which is apparently very indicative of bonobo culture, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> that they, they enjoy both sexes. Uh, now you get it. Say, yeah, well, I, th <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. Yeah, that's what that Dr. Sue bonobos says. are bisexual. That's what Dr. Sue believes. But this is the one time you could turn around and after the after he makes a Kanzi makes a pass this is the one time you could turn around and say, "Stop it, you big ape." <laughs> <laughs> Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.